In this video I want to talk about example 4 from the FDWK book section 3.4. And here we have an example of a dynamite blast propelling a heavy rock straight up with a launch velocity of 160 feet per second which is about 109 miles per hour and reaching a height of s equals 160 t minus 16 t squared feet per second after t seconds. And over to the left in the bottom corner we have a, a diagram of what this looks like. And the first thing we want to find out is how high does the rock go? Well we'll know how high the rock goes because we're starting off with a velocity, an initial velocity of 160 feet per second. As this rock is propelled upwards the acceleration due to gravity is pulling it down and it's slowing it down until eventually it's going to reach a velocity of zero and then it's going to start to drop and pick up speed as the velocity uh, is negative and the acceleration is also negative. So what we want to do first of all is to find out where the velocity is equal to zero. And we so we say that the position of the rock is 160t minus 16t squared and that's a given. Now the velocity is just the first derivative of position with respect to time and that is 160 minus 32 t. We set that equal to zero and solve for t. That will occur when 32 t is 160 or when t is equal to five seconds. So when time is equal to five seconds the particle or the rock will reach its highest point and all we need to do is plug five seconds into the position function to find out how high it was at that particular point in time. And so we plug in t equals five into the position function to get 800 minus 400 or 400 feet and that is the height of the rock. That's the highest point that the rock reaches. Next, in part B, we want to find out what is the velocity and the speed of the rock when it is 256 feet above the ground on the way up and also on the way down. And so what we're going to do there is to take the position function and set it equal to 256 feet and solve for t. That'll tell us what the time is and then we can plug that time into the velocity function also. And so we have 16t squared minus 160t plus 256. It's a quadratic. And so we'll factor and can't factor that and set it equal to 0. Um, we factored out a 16. Now we'll factor the, the quadratic, giving us t minus 2 and t minus 8. So at t equals 2 and at t equals 8, the, at t equals 2, the particle is at 256 feet on its way up to 400. And at t equals 8, the, the rock is at 256 feet on its way down from 400. At t equals 2, the velocity would be 160 minus 32t or 160 minus 64. And so that would be 96 feet per second. It started off at 160 feet per second, and now it's slowing down by the time it reaches 256 feet to 96 feet per second. At time t equals 8, the velocity is 160 minus 32 times 8. And so that would be negative 96 feet per second. And so you recall again that once it reached 400 feet, the velocity was basically zero. Now it's starting to drop, and now it's, as it's dropping, it's picking up speed going down. So those are the velocities. The speed would just be the absolute value of, the, of those. So at both of those points, the speed is 96 feet per second. The velocity with a positive sign tells you it's going up, with a negative sign tells you it's coming down. For the next part, the acceleration would just be the derivative of velocity and that would just be negative 32 feet per second squared. Or every second it's picking up at that particular point in time, for every second it travels, it's picking up an additional 32 feet per second in the downward direction. And finally we want to ask when does it hit the ground? And it hits the ground when s of t is equal to zero, the height is zero. Factoring out a 16t, we'd get 16t times the quantity 10 minus t. And so it's at zero on the ground at t equals zero. That's when it started and was propelled upwards. And at t equals 10, when it reaches the ground again. And so that does it for this particular problem.